Everything College Hockey fans, we're with the head coach of Northern Michigan University for the Wildcats, Grandpa Tony Grant. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, James. I appreciate having you on. Yeah, yeah. You've been there since 2017. Uh, what's been your biggest thing that you've implemented at the university since you got on campus there? There's been a lot of different changes happening, but I think the, the biggest thing that um, our players will see, uh, the, the experience have been um, training table. Each night, uh, our, our guys get a meal, yep. and they get to pick the menu. Okay. So that they really like that. Yeah. And then just the transformation of our locker room yep. and, and our dressing room project. We were supposed to start this three years ago. Okay. And obviously the, the climate change with COVID project gets put on hold. And then along the way, to have this thing completed, they needed to move the coaches out of the what I felt was the players' lounge and yep. give that back to the players. Mm -hmm. Moved us around the corner. So that was the first thing that I'm getting done. They did the players' lounge last year. Now they're doing the dressing room. It's it's just been time, and the stuff we had was was really good. And, and actually, Coach Comley, when he built the rink, he was a great forward thinker. Because yeah. even going back to my days at Minnesota, it was just locker room training. Yep. At, at Northern, it's you want the players come in the back side of the rink, yep. and it'll be branded all the way down with NHL players, All Americans, playoff championships, all that branding stuff. But as you walk in, there's a ton of space. We have the whole one side of the rink, so we have players lounge in there. We have changing area, dressing room. We have hydro room, yep. sauna, into the training room, into the weight room. Wow. So everything's perfect. underneath. Yeah. Um, now we're just upgrading and updating it. Yeah, and it's one spot mix. Your job a lot easier as far as recruiting goes, right? And how frustrating was that though? Like, oh, I got to hold off a little bit. Obviously, you win coach of the year in the WCHA your first year. You get your eight-year contract. But how, how difficult was it to be patient for this process, knowing it's a huge part of recruiting for you? Usually the fundraising piece to it, yeah. that was incredible. You know, going out to see donors in Edmonton, yeah. Traverse City, Phoenix, guys were awesome, like awesome. Fly out, and, you know, they take you to the private club they're a member of, yeah, um, yeah. play around to golf, and then what do you need? Mm -hmm. What can I give you? Yep. And and we've, we had, we've had such great support locally as well. Ended up being a lot, a lot of money. So once we had it, now you're just waiting. Like that's the hard part, right? Yeah, you, you, it come to life. Yeah, so so now that we're, it's coming to fruition, to be honest, it, it might have been better in the long run the way it went, because we've tweaked a couple things along the way, yeah. that once you do it, it's done. It's you're done. not going it's back done. and yeah. going back to it. Um, those things maybe help us in the long run. Mm -hmm. Now you got obviously that new locker room, everything coming to play here. Talk about your fan base though, and that's obviously another part of recruiting, but talk about the amazing fan base Northern Michigan has and what that means to you as a coach. This was three years ago, mm -hmm. um, and you go back to the history of the program, yeah. the, the Wildcat fans have wore hard hats. Yep. So yep. all the way back. Yeah. So going back three years, we did some things on campus within the rink to enhance the fan experience. And we put a school store in. Um, actually, my wife was able to choose all the things they were going to put in there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it just, it works out when your kids are kind of that age. Yeah, yeah. Whatever they think is cool is what, you know, probably is going to sell. Exactly. Um, so that worked out well. We put some more stations in for concessions and beers and stuff like that. But I think the biggest thing we did was we went to the student section and we said, we want you guys to come up with a name for yourselves. Yeah. And and, and the band, because the band's a big part of the pageantry too. Yeah, so huge the, college the, 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 the fans are the, the student fans are called the Wild. Yep. And the band's called the Twisted Whiskers. Okay. So they're right next to each other. We had a hard hat painting party, so bring your hard hat up and like some guy there some people are like, hey, stick your hand in the paint and slap it on my head. Yeah, yeah. Sign it. Um, yeah. You know, there's a little bit of a love affair with our with, with our team and our fans. Mm -hmm. The community is so supportive, but it's driven by the student section, just like every rink. Yeah, yeah. And you know, like there's a review, all of a sudden you start seeing the wave going, starts exactly. in the student section. Yeah, yeah. That's been incredible. I mean, we're second in attendance, only to a team that just seats more people than us. Junior hockey team used to be called the Sentinels, now they're called the Junior Wildcats. So there's just Wildcat stuff everywhere. Yeah. It's And it's been great. Yeah, I mean, you obviously you played for the Gophers. You know what it's like to play in front of a massive student section, a fan base that loves hockey. How do you think the players think about it, though, as far as the students playing in front of that? What are they saying to you? Like, hey, coach, I like this. Or Yeah, I mean, are they giving you advice on what to do? Or? They interact, you know, having these parties with, with the students is like, yeah. They're interacting, mm -hmm. so they're going back and forth. There were some guys that were really influential in this student group to start. I think the biggest thing is is they're so supportive of our team, and when 
it's almost like in the game, once we score our first goal, yeah, the yeah. game changes. Right. Because right. now they're in it, mm -hmm. we're in it, and we just feed off each other. So it's been a it's been an important part of our home success. Yeah. And part of growing now, you guys are in the CCH, a new conferences here. What was that like? I mean, see, I think from our perspective, covering college hockey, like they did a great job putting on everything this year. But for you and coaching, did that change anything, or what was your experience like in the first year? Yeah, okay. eight really competitive teams yep. starting it. Um, that was important. I think the travel, Alaska, Alaska yeah, yeah. And, and, and Alabama, you know, yep. your footprint's so large that, you know, that, that was better. But I, I think that just the professionalism of the CCHA, having the Hobie Baker winner, having a team play for the national championship, you know, in, in a league where every game is competitive, yes, you know, yep. and that's where, like, you don't look at your schedule and go, that's a game I can win. Yep. I'm going to win that game. Right. You know, right. like, it, it, you, anybody looks at the, their games and they go, Oh, we better play good. Exactly. You know? Even St. Thomas who started off this year, I mean, they're they're in every game, and they had Mankato too, too, in the first round of the playoffs, yeah. like late in the game. So that's it's good to see it for CCHA. As your coach in Northern Michigan, where do you want to be in five years? Where do you see the program in five years? Obviously, maybe a national championship, but yeah, that, you know, and that's the goal for everybody, right. right? This year, I think, was the start of the culmination of where we want to go. Yep. Um, we had some things happen out of our control that you know, at, at one point, I think we're. Out of our 15 games, we're 13 and two. And um, you know, Mankato comes in, and you know, you, this is the third time you beat the number one team in the country. And so we're, we got all this momentum, and then things happen that a bunch of injuries. Joe yeah. Nardi, our captain, has gone. Hank Crone was leading the country in scoring, and then we get COVID. And I feel like we're coming, and I feel like this was the first year where we could have came. Mm -hmm. You know, without if not for those things that are outside of your control. The goal is to be an NCAA tournament team. Yeah, you know yeah. that that's the goal every year to start because when you get to the NCAA tournament, it's matchups. How's your goalie playing? Yep. Is your team playing well? Yeah. Um, you know, one through 16, you look, there was a run of, of those teams that were four seeds winning, the, winning yeah. the national tournament. So just being part of that, that's the goal every year is to, to be part of that, to play in championship games, to have a chance to, to win some league titles. Yeah. And that's, that's the expectation of where I want this program to be in five years. I like that, I like that. And I think a big part of that, from what, you know, we've talked to a bunch of coaches here at the AHCA convention this week, but a big part of a lot of coaches' game plan was just to be relatable to the players and the culture side of things. What are you saying to the guys in the room? What are you trying to implement? What kind of culture are you trying to implement? at Northern Michigan? It's a two-part thing. Um, I'll start with this. Every time that I talk to a player, talk to our team, yeah. play power, but whatever, I, I still have a lot of player in me. Yeah, so yeah, right. I, I think going into that, what's on the other side of this, if I was receiving this information, mm -hmm. how would I feel about that as a player? Yeah. So that's that's number one with me is like, like I don't want guys calling me coach. Like yeah. I, I, I'm Grant, yep. you know, we're, we're in this together. You know, and, and maybe that's just my age, and maybe it's just the coaches I played for. But then you get into the culture thing. To me, culture is about treating people with respect, being prepared, caring about each other, mm -hmm. being a family. Like, those are things that are important. Like, we do these things that, at the beginning of every year where we find out everything about everybody. If one day I'm walking by you and, and we're both players and maybe you're having a hard day, this guy's not like, man, what's, you know, what's his problem? It's yeah. like, hey, is your mom okay? Yeah, yeah. Like, is yeah. your sister okay? You know, like, that's culture to me. That's, do you want to be there every day? You know, I, I tell kids on recruiting trips, I say, the biggest selling point we have is, is our players. Mm -hmm. And listen to what they say. Because yeah. if, if, if you're there and they and they go, how do you like it? And they go, well, it's, it's good. Is it good? Yeah. You know, yeah. or they go, this is unbelievable. This yeah. place is great. They can't stop talking about it. Can't right. stop talking about right. it. That's that's what I want in our Wildcat family, and that's that's what I would have wanted as a player. Um, it's fun to come to the rink. Now, do you work and push and grind? And yes, you have to. Yeah. If, you, if you're going to be successful, there's no shortcuts. But it doesn't mean we can't have fun doing it and love each other along the way. Yep. Let's say for advice for younger kids, high school, maybe Pee Wee, whatever it is. What advice are you giving them to get to that Division One level to maybe come play at Northern Michigan? What are you looking for? Well, a couple things. The, the first piece of advice that I will give all the young players, there's no direct route to college hockey. There is not a path that's better than a different path. Don't worry about what's going on around you. You know, and, and I go back to like, 
my recruitment process when I was coming through. At 18, I wasn't ready for college hockey. I wasn't. Yeah. If I would have gone to the University of Minnesota at 18, I would have never played. Mm -hmm. But I get there at 20 and I get to play all the time. Yeah. All of a sudden, I'm on the first line, yeah. the first day of practice. And my experience was maybe better than some of the guys that were the same age as me. Yeah. That maybe experience is wrong, but my, I got to play more. Anybody would say, I would rather be in a situation where I'm gonna have success. Just because other people are committing to schools or going to junior hockey, or th yes, it's right for them, but it doesn't mean that it's right for all of us. So just you know, block the noise out, just continue to work. I, I think the one thing that I tell players, to me, it's a skill set. And you hear it when somebody says, man, he's a hard worker. It's almost a, a degrading comment, like he doesn't have skill, he doesn't have... It's like, that's the number one thing for me. Yeah. Like, I can make you better at stick handling. I could improve your hockey sense, I can improve your skating. You can improve in the weight room. And, and every coach can do these things. Not, it's not yeah. me, it's, yeah. just, it's what we do. But you can't replicate hard work, and there's no shortcut. So, yes, do you work on your stick skill 100%? Do you want to try become stronger and quicker and faster and work on your skating? All those things matter. They're all real. But you cannot replace hard work. So that, to me, is what I will tell every young player. Like, if you're at the top of your birth class, yeah. don't get caught. You know, I was the guy that was chasing these kids all the time. Right. So I, I always felt like, what am I going to do today? Who am I going to catch today? Am yeah. I catching a kid in Roseau? Am I catching a kid in Detroit? Am I catching a kid in New York? I'm catching somebody today. And like, that was the thought process of for me. And, and I'm sure the guys at the top were like, I'm not getting caught today. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. And, and it just falls back into that that work ethic and those things that you know i think are you know such valuable tools for to become a good college hockey player that's a lot of good insight you obviously you played you've coached and now you're you're trying to win a national championship on on that there's now the transfer portal and there's been a lot of talk of who's going where and whatnot but how difficult has that been it's kind of new to college hockey how much like free agency in nhl but what's it been like has it been a beneficial to you or vice versa or what would you say right now our, our program, I, I would say, has benefited from the influx of talent. You know, A.J. Vanderbeck was, you know, a, a transfer, and A.J. was second or third in the country in, in yeah. goals. Um, Hank Crone's a, it was a transfer. Huge, yeah. Um, you know, was leading the country in scoring at one point, you know. We, we got some more guys this year. I, I think what ends up happening when kids go into that portal, what they're looking for, and, and, and now with this locker room and, and yeah. all the amenities and all that stuff, we're gonna be right there with, with everybody. We gotta be careful that we're not getting guys that wanna come for those reasons. You know, like, that's not what, you know, we're looking for in a player. With the guys that are in the portal, here's what, in our experience, what they've been looking for. Relationship with the coaching staff, um, a chance to win, a chance to get some more ice time, and a chance to develop. I'll, I'll use Hank as a great example. Like, yeah. Hank was great for us. Denver wins a national championship. Denver did the right thing too. Yeah. Like, yep. Yep. You know what I mean? Like it's, there, there's just, for whatever reason, these things don't always work. Every player we've taken, whether it's been in the initial recruiting process, in the transfer portal, we have gotten to know that kid and we get under the hood. And I, I think there's a little bit of um, angst about why kids are in the portal for some yeah. reasons. If you find out what that reason is and you find out what the motivation of that individual is, mm -hmm. I think you can find some pretty hungry, motivated players that are just looking for another chance. And, and I know it's a hot topic and I know that there are differing opinions you know, from a lot of people. You know, my thought is this, if, if we lose a player in there, I'm happy for him because that means he's going to go somewhere else and he's going to be happy yeah, right. for, for whatever reason they, you know, they left because they, they weren't happy. That's okay. I mean, like, I, I just, I think it's a opportunity for players and programs, you know, to get a fresh start. Um, and, and we haven't lost really hardly anybody. Um, it's, good. it's like anything, the game's evolving and changing. And there's, there's some new rules that might be coming down from the NCAA that might might open up everything. I mean, yeah. we might be talking about the CHL again. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. you just don't know. When things happen, you have to be aware of the times and I think you have to change with the times. What can we expect from you and Northern Michigan moving forward now that the meetings are done, it's, you know, time to get back to work and here we go. Yeah, we're, our roster's complete. Yep. You know, our construction's complete. There's been some players that we've added from the portal that I think going into this year, 
If you would have said, what's an area of concern for you? I would have said having enough centers available and having enough defensemen available. Because yeah. we lost our, our top three defensemen off last year's team. We have some good freshmen coming in that I'm really excited for, but we've added a little bit from the portal. And it's the deepest group of forwards we're ever gonna have. I, I think our decor is in a good place. And Charlie Glockner kind of took that number one position last year as a freshman. And so he's won a playoff round. He's, he's been to the semifinal. And, and talking with him and our meeting at the end of the year, there is fire in that kid's eyes. And he is going home and he's got a plan to get better. I like the, the construction of the players we have and I like the mentality of the group yeah. that we have. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to this team. We have some freshmen that are coming in that I think are gonna have major impacts from day one. I like where we're at. Yeah, uh, we're with Hank Cron, a couple of your players, Newhouse. Yep. Uh, we talked about him blocking so many shots. I mean, he's blocked, what, over a couple hundred shots the past yeah. two seasons combined. <laughs> I gotta know in the locker room, does he always have an ice bag on or what's, what's going on <laughs> for that kid? Like, I, how do you get in front of a hundred shots? There's no way. You, like, you would never even think, like you wouldn't even, like you think like Bull Durham and we yeah. got the ice bag. I don't think I've ever seen him have an ice bag. That's insane. Like, uh, he we just, love it though. He, he, and we have fun with it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the stuff you guys put out, yeah, you know, where we had great. him and him and uh, Van Uen in one year were one and two, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. like the Happy Gilmore stuff. Uh, <laughs> we have a good time with it, so um, appreciate what you guys do for college hockey and really think it's great. Oh, thank you. We really appreciate you guys and your time today. And that's Grant Petroleum in Northern Michigan, the head coach. Stay tuned for this season. Big things coming.